Hey there. It's Christine, Cruel World, sitting in my car. Um, wanted to um, reach out to everybody um, this morning because I... I feel like we need somebody to advocate for my small community here in Georgia. Um, lots of information coming out that just isn't true. And um, because I've been part of the Let Go Society where, you know, everybody's being laid off. So far, everybody in my house has been laid off. Um, you know, I've given... I've been given all of this time to uh, kind of do what I've been wanting to do all along. Um, and that's basically, um, you know, check facts. Um, basically look into what we're being told and how things are being reported. And um, so the last few days I've taken my time to go around and see things for myself and um, kind of you know, see what the media isn't telling us or what they're not showing us. And if you go to my YouTube channel, Cruel World, you'll see the raw videos of me going down and um, looking at the hospitals, um, the raw video of where the COVID-19 tests are being taken. Um, and you're going to see that it's just not what we're being told. Um, we were told that... Um, I, I can't remember what we were told this morning um, on how many cases there are in Georgia, but the number just keeps getting higher and higher and higher. Um, and then last Thursday, um, there was uh, a report that 11-year-old boy died from COVID-19. Um, looked into that with the Open Records Act. Turns out that this boy did not die of COVID-19. There's absolutely no coalition, no connection between COVID-19 and how this boy actually died. Um, and though the media was quick to bring that to your television, uh, they, they were not quick to recant that story um, and let you know that the uh, Georgia Department of Health um, has very much confirmed that they have not had any um, children die from COVID-19. But of course, the media is not going to bring that to you. Um, wanted to make sure that, you know, I brought this to you and I hope that you, you share this with your friends because I know a lot of people in um, Georgia are freaking out. And my daughter's one of them. She is losing her mind but it's really not as bad as, as what they're saying. Right now, we have 5,800 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the entire state of Georgia. Um, when you think about the over 6 million people just in Atlanta, that's not a whole lot. Um, 184 deaths um, associated or related to or connected to um um, COVID-19. Now those are very key words. And here's, here's what comes to mind. Um, I'm reaching out to my Kratom community to recall what we went through when we were trying to demonize, when the government was trying to demonize Kratom. And by the way, they still are. So Kratom saves lives. Woo, woo. Um, they would, um, they were testing absolutely every single death that happened um, in the state of Georgia to see if that person had kratom in their in their system. Because one of the things they do, they do a toxicology um, to kind of see if, you know, the driving accident that killed them, um, you know, involved any kind of substance or alcohol. So every single death in the state of Georgia was being tested um, to see if that person had kratom. And someone would die um, in a a freak accident or even a car crash and um 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 I'm sorry just a thought just went through my brain and I, I'm not good at this and I'm very new to this so I don't know where to look but um so every single uh um death would be tested and if it was a, a car crash say um, for instance, that, you know, somehow the guy or the girl turned up with Kratom in their system. Instead of saying that it was the vehicle accident that killed the person, they'd say, oh, 
Kratom was associated to this and boom, check off one more Kratom death. And that's what they're doing with COVID-19. Um, I think what people aren't understanding in these COVID deaths is that um, when a person is already dying of a different disease or is suffering with a different disease, um, sadly, their time is going to be up eventually. Um, so every person who has unfortunately passed away in the last three months, um, as they go through the hospital, because that's generally the first place they take them, um, you know, they, they test them for COVID. And as you know, um, there's some reports that say COVID can be transmitted with symptoms or without symptoms. And, you know, maybe it's on the surfaces, maybe it's not on the surfaces, but if that person was already in, in stage five cancer and in their last days, and by God, you know, they come through the hospital and they pick up the virus. Um, well then it was a COVID death. It's not, it's not a cancer death. It's a COVID death. And that's how they're counting these COVID deaths. Um, basically, it, even though there could be underlying issues, they're not counting it as heart disease. They're not counting it as cancer. They're not count, counting it as a as a car accident. They're counting it if, if COVID is associated or related to it. They're counting it as a COVID death, and that's what they're bringing to you. They're bringing you these, these COVID deaths where COVID was not the only thing going on because it's not going to happen. Um, and they do that to um, control you. And here's, here's my theory. Um, <clears throat> the, the president just unleashed $4 trillion from the federal funds. And um, in order for each of the states to get their hands on that money, they have to report that we have a problem. Um, I, I suspect this is why the governor has not expanded um, unemployment and um, the, the CARES Act and why he's not expanding Medicaid during this time. Because we've had 184 deaths and 5,800 confirmed cases. So we're not really under... Um, a state of emergency in the state of Georgia, but we have to make it look like that um, in order to get our hands on any of that federal money. Um, so that's what he's doing. That's why we're on lockdown for 10 days. We're going to see what this does. But in the meantime, you know, we're, we're destroying millions of lives. You know, people are terrified of this, this, virus that, you know, they're going to die. They're going to, they're going to, you know, this is the end of the world. I mean, people are hiding in their homes, terrified. And that's not a way to, to invoke your citizens to live. It's, it's vicious. So, um, I, I kind of wanted to bring this out there because this is truly how I feel. And I'm very passionate about this. Um, I, I was very passionate about Kratom too, but one of the things that I also wanted to tell you was um, in my search as I'm driving around and I'm doing these videos and um, I'm I'm trying to bring you know real information to my community and I hope you guys watch this and share this. I'm trying to keep it under ten minutes. We're at eight minutes now. Um, um, before I took off to go see what the COVID testing site was like, which was empty. There were less than 10 cars waiting for the 12 o'clock appointment. Um, I was I was the eighth car. Um, I think there were a total of nine cars being tested at the 12 o'clock appointment. And, you know, according to statistics, um, you have one in every 10. So, you know, the possibility that I was sitting there amongst anybody who had COVID was pretty slim because there weren't even 10 of us. Um, nobody was coughing couple of people had their, their face masks on and sitting in the car waiting to, you know, be taken in. It was, it, to me, it was all a show. Um, it, it, it was all a show. Go look at the videos, go look up the videos. It's on cruel world. Um, it's YouTube channel. They're there. I think there's six of them, but another thing you'll see on the videos is, um, um, that day before I took off, I called the hospital local hospital here in, in Cobb County. 
Um, I wanted to see, you know, what I could find out. And I probably should have recorded the, the, the call, but I don't have the technology to do that yet. That'll be next. Um, I called up there to see what kind of weight we were, we were facing if we had an emergency. And um, I called up. I said, you know, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I've broken a finger. It hurts like hell. Um, you know, what kind of weight am I looking at? And I was told 48 hours. There would be a 48 hour wait time at least before I could be seen for a broken bone because of COVID-19. Okay. That was roughly eight o'clock in the morning when I made the call. Um, kind of got it together hit the ground running, ran out. And I, and when I say hit the ground running, I didn't, I took a shower, didn't dry my hair, didn't straighten it, didn't put on makeup. I was like, Ooh, I got to go see this. I got to see what's going on. So I ran out and in those videos, you're going to see that my hair is horrible. But anyway, um, I got to the hospital. It was roughly between 12 and one. It was after I went to go see the 12 o'clock, um, COVID testing thing. Um, and the waiting room was absolutely empty. There's no one in there. Zero, zero people in there. Um, I found that to be quite amusing. So <laughs> I'm going to keep bringing this stuff to you because I think it's really important that somebody keeps a grip on reality. And in all of my travels, if I, if I, um, contract COVID-19, I will definitely let you know. And I'll be the first one to say that I was wrong about this, but I'm not wrong about this. Um, there's something bigger going on here. Um, this reminds me a lot of the fear mongering that took place in 9-11. And then again, back in um, the eighties with the AIDS epidemic, how we were all afraid. Um, we're changing. Society is going to change just like with 9-11. Um, it's not going to go back to normal. So if you think that life will go back to the way you know it, or knew it. That's I don't see that happening. I hope it gets as, it, I, I hope it goes as back to as as close to normal as possible. But um, this right here, what's happening? We're we're learning a new way of living, just like with nine eleven, when you know we shut down the world, um, we you know crashed the economy, um, and then everyone was afraid to fly. Um, giving PSA agents the right to touch us and pat us down and abuse us. Um, that's what we're facing. Um, I wish we had a, a stronger society to push back, but unfortunately we, we are, we are, are, are you know, we, we, we buy what we're being told and, um, I'm going to do my best to, to bring it to you and tell you and show you, that this is garbage. I um, also want to point out um, a video you need to see by Candace Owens um, about the newborn baby who died of COVID in Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, that that the story in itself is a is a true tragedy. Um, look up that story where supposedly a, a newborn infant died of COVID. Turned out. It was garbage. Never happened. Um, the mayor or the governor or somebody came out saying um, um, this baby has died associated to COVID. And she does actually do a better job um, describing or explaining how the virus is tested on, on deaths and how that all works. Um, but it's a good video. Um, and she'll go over some keywords that you need to alert to when you hear them, like things like, uh, associated to COVID, um, in connection to COVID. Um, those, those are trash words and phrases. And that means, you know, when you hear those things, that means the, the information you're being fed is garbage and you shouldn't listen to it. Okay. So I'm getting ready to, uh, go, uh, do some more investigating today. I'm going to see what I can see. Uh, learn what I can learn and I'm going to bring it to you. Go check out my other videos. They are not good, by the way. If you're expecting to see a made-up Christine, you're not going to see a made-up Christine. 
And about made up, this is about as made up as I get. I'm not a makeup mongrel, but my daughter will fix that eventually. All right, you guys have a great day and um, be on the lookout for more videos.